That's right. It's what you've been waiting for. What is this? Monkey and Biggs 365 episode 14, Biggs. Is this the 14th right. one? That does sound right. Is that Catorce in Spanish, Biggs? It's probably not Quince. <laughs> probably. Uh, uh, should we start counting? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce. That's right. We did. That's for the international audience. We have a lot of Spanish speakers out there, and we just taught them how to count to 15. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm half Mexican, can't speak a lick of Spanish, and failed Spanish, too, <laughs> in high school. Not Spanish too, as in T O O, as in like. <laughs> no, like Spanish number two. He somehow passed Spanish one, and then Spanish two yeah, got a little too complex. Spanish one was basically "Hola, me llamo," whatever, and that was all Spanish one was. And our mentally ill teacher <clears throat> would play like a movie in English and have Spanish subtitles on it instead of the reverse, which is yeah, it is what it is. Or we just bring up uh, Walmart or Pepsi and then get out of an entire. <laughs> Days worth of class. Wait, I don't remember that. About what was the lore about really? that? She loved talking about Pepsi. So at Walmart one time, she went to like get a drink from the Pepsi vending machine and she found a kitten in like the spot where you pull the drink out. And so she named the cat Pepsi and took it home. What? And she'll tell you the entire like 30 minute story every time you bring it up. And she her. will just stop doing her lesson of the day. Like so, yeah. some guy for the eighth time this month has derailed the entire <laughs> lesson because he brought every up Pepsi. Time. She also was the one that got in trouble for um, asking the class if she had given out the homework or already or something and everybody would just say yes and she never did. See, that's rough when you come in the next day and she expects you to turn in the homework. No, because then we just gaslit her and say, no, you never gave it to us. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you think that woman is dead now? Guaranteed, no. But uh, oh, wow. the good thing is I don't think she's teaching anymore. That's for the best. Now, why is it a guarantee in your mind? It's like you've been meeting <clears throat> up with this woman or something. Like, How do you know for a fact she's alive? Um, I guess I'm not sure. I okay. just imagine we might have heard something on like our... Uh, Alumni page or something? Or uh, I'm, I'm not in anything like that. <laughs> Those I, people don't want to see what I'm up to. Yeah, I never... So I, like, deleted my Facebook at one point, and then when I came back, all my groups were gone. And I never got reinvited to, like, our class page, which I don't care at all. <laughs> um, but for some reason, the just actual alumni page for the school itself added me, and I was like, oh, sure. Wow. And it's just about a bunch of people that, like, graduated in the 70s. <laughs> Throwing parties all the time and giving updates about their life. So there's nothing from our graduating class, like people bitching about how pathetic and sad their lives are, that we could take a look at and get some uh, schadenfreude? No. Um, okay. Sadly, I don't even think we can get that on YouTube anymore. Did that one guy uh, stop <laughs> his YouTube channel? How long did you watch that? Yeah, we had a buddy who uh, everybody called Stuart Little, and he started, like... Because he, he was a small guy. He's my size, so he's ba basically a, a midget. You know, he's my height. Imagine imagine monkey's size, but, like, a pretty decent build that looks Oh, he's jacked be because, guy. yeah, he got made fun of for being short his whole life. And instead of becoming <clears throat> a comedian like me, who is a failed and unfunny loser, he uh, went to the gym and got fucking jacked. And then, like, he opened his own business. Like, he started his own gym. And then he started making YouTube videos, like vlogs about how everything was going wrong and his girl dumped him and the gym's like failing. No, so at first the vlogs were fine. He was happy about um, life, showing off his work and stuff. And then one episode it said like, what was the title? It was like, she's gone or something. I, that's like that's one of my old titles, Biggs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. I remember him like sitting in his car and just like almost crying on camera. It's like what a change from the day before. Is it, maybe that's where I was inspired. I think I made a very similar video, but mine probably got a few more views than his. Did you sing the pterodactyl song? I should have. <laughs> She's gone out of my life. I was wrong. You want me to do the Asian version of it or the normal one? Well, speaking of Asians, that could uh, take us into our topic today. <laughs> Well, actually, our topic is the pathetic list, Biggs. Fair now, enough. Uh, you kind of clickbaited me then with the title, I guess. Well, the, no, the title 
is a subsection of the topic. Oh, I figured more me. people okay. would want to know the direct thing on the list rather than just titling it the <laughs> pathetic list. But me and Biggs, you might not know this, folks, but we've been doing this YouTube thing since I was fucking 18, okay? It's been 10 years. If you want to watch our original Let's Play, it is on this channel, like Blue's Clues something. Maybe we were like 16 when we did that one. <clears throat> But like that. on our old school show where we did daily Let's Plays, they got like four views each. One of the segments was The Pathetic List. And we always talk about it, but we've never really brought it back in an official capacity. And we never really kept track of what was on the list. So I think uh, as a staple of this show, we're going to start doing The Pathetic List. And, you know, the idea is Biggs and I bring in things, our types of people that we think are pathetic and then we can maybe talk about it, see if we agree or disagree with the other one, you know, hash it out. And I think that the audience should then vote for whether or not it belongs on the list. And and that'll be like a point system so we can keep track of like the most pathetic things to the least. How's that sound, Biggs? True. Yeah, that works. Um, I think we probably have to set a baseline, though, and let everyone know that even from the original list, the number one thing on the pathetic list is us. We are the most pathetic thing. And I was actually going to let the audience vote on that as the, because of course we should be the first thing on the list. If we are going to judge other people as being pathetic, we have to acknowledge that we are pathetic as well. But my question was, if we're going to let the audience vote on the ranking of where everything belongs on the list, should it be Monkey and Biggs together as one or should we have our own individual spots on the <laughs> list? Because I think I might uh, be a little more pathetic than you. <laughs> I think to save our feelings, we'll do it as a, a pair. Fuck the feelings, Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> you think, I, I don't want an inaccurate list. Because if, if if Biggs gets a score of 99 out of 100 pathetic points, that just feels unfair to me. Okay. Well, so I mean, let's, sure. let's, let's start with me as the baseline, okay? There's plenty Facts of reasons. I don't care about your feelings, right? <laughs> I agree. Well, I mean, lately the people who say that uh, have flipped their script a little bit. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> their feelings are getting in the way when it comes to people saying Christ is king. But I actually do have that written down on my things that I want to put on the list. So we'll get to that later. But uh, if we're going to start with entry number one to the pathetic list, Simeon Jimmy, Monkey Jones, where do we even begin? Uh, what a failure of a man living in a trailer park with four cats. Now, that's a sad life. Streaming to an upwards of not even a hundred people, like might as well just kill himself now. Uh, Biggs, you have anything you want to add before we let people vote? Well, in your defense, it does say you're streaming to a hundred and three, so oh, it wow. is at least a hundred. <laughs> With if I'm that pathetic and we have a hundred people watching, does that mean like should we put the one hundred viewers on the list as well to see how they compare to us? All individually, though, we got to get all the usernames <laughs> in here. <laughs> Every single person who becomes a member could uh, be put on the pathetic list. Yeah, that, that's a good one. In the, people uh, in people the... who pay money to Sim and Jimmy's <laughs> podcast. Yeah, the, uh, the the tag for the people that join the Big Squirt is actually pathetic list too. Mm. Good. Okay. So everyone in there is on the list. Uh, so I'm going to start poll number one. Let's see. Uh, does Simeon Jimmy belong on the pathetic list there's got to be a shorter way of doing that but fuck it okay we'll see how many pathetic points i get uh but now let's let's talk about bigs god how many times do i have to mute discord sounds <laughs> and it never fucking sticks it just keeps wait why are you putting a guess yeah <laughs> you don't gotta send me a guess but i wanted to <laughs> okay uh, Biggs predicted that 89% of the vote would say yes. Uh, with 51 votes, it's currently at 75, so we'll let a few more people vote. Uh, but Biggs, let's talk about Biggs. I would argue Biggs is not pathetic, okay? He started off as uh, a depressed alcoholic looking for suicide, and look at him today. He's a happily married man with a job, loving wife, and only one cat instead of four. No, I don't think Biggs belongs on the pathetic list. What do you think, Biggs? I don't know. That might be a hot take. That might be a hot take. 
Uh, after 68 votes, I currently have uh, 74 pathetic points. Even when we're not playing Gaspionage, I still suck at this game. So let's see. Uh, hmm, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'll just keep the list on my own computer for now, and I'll show it at the end. I don't know what's going on with OBS. Okay, so Monkey. And I'm starting to sweat, too. It is hot over here. Maybe I should go hit the AC. Okay, I'll keep track. I'm at 74. Uh, any last things about Biggs we should put out there before they start voting about you? Um, I am a sweaty nerd. I play D and D and things like Baldur's Gate. So I mean, that's probably a negative for some people. Uh, I don't know. Those are social games. You know, you have friends to play with. That's pretty good. My hair's out of whack today, and now I'm starting to sweat. So it's gonna be a real special episode. <laughs> I'm just going to go fucking full crazy with it. Yeah, some of you might actually notice that I'm not wearing the robe today. And that's because it is way too hot here. Yeah. And I did not want to become the monkey man and start sweating. You, yeah, you definitely don't want to be like me. Okay. Uh, Biggs, you currently have 20, 25% yes. 23, 24% yes. Much, much lower than me by about 50% Biggs. Should we just clock it at 24 since it's kind of sitting there? Uh, it looks like we're about half of the people now. And it's Ooh, now it's up to 28. 28. Uh-oh. Biggs is getting more pathetic by the second. <laughs> it's because I brought up uh, d and isn't it? Okay, 27. So now we're, we're both on the list now, okay? We can actually get into things that we want to talk about. I'm at 74. Biggs is at 27. Let's see how some other pathetic things would uh, compare. We did get a super chat from Wesser who said, Kim Rollins, look him up on the SOAR. He used to be my boss. Biggs, you have a lot of thoughts on that? What is SOAR? <laughs> Do you think I have any clue what he's talking about? Kim Rollins is the younger sister of Detective Amanda Rollins in Law & Order. Okay. Are they lying to us? <laughs> well, Biggs, to get back to the title of this episode, what would you like to to suggest for the pathetic list? Um, one of the ones I thought of was the YouTube or really any any uh, place that people put up videos anymore, TikTok, anything like that. But pranksters, people that do Biggs, like the public pranks. Biggs, wait. Okay, I'm I'm they fine have with to you. Go on there. It's fine, but. I think it was very obvious I was transitioning you to talk about the ship. <laughs> you want to start off with that? Uh, I, I guess. I mean, if you want to start with YouTube pranksters, that's fine. But that's fine. fine. We'll, do, we'll do the that one next. And we'll okay. Talk about okay. Yeah. Tell me why, why you hate pranksters so much, Biggs. This is a very 2015 take. Haven't we come well, around as a they're coming, society they're to like back. the pranksters now? They're coming back in swarms, and I feel like they're even worse. To the point where, um, oh man, I can't remember his name, but one of the dudes literally got like shot in the middle of a mall just for like talking to somebody and like getting up in their face. And the guy is just like, dude, go away. And then just shot him straight up. I, that guy I think, should go uh, on the hero list. The guy that shot him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. And uh, he literally told the cops, he's like, yeah, I hate pranksters. So I shot him, basically. And they let him go? Yeah. He, oh, wow. Uh, he got in a little bit of trouble. I, He might have actually faced something, but I think the first court hearing, like, they said, yeah, we, we understand. <laughs> they suck, <laughs> basically. Um, well, Biggs, it, you know, it is my duty to push back, and I, I think I should rightfully point out that even we were some YouTube pranksters back in the day. There's videos up on this channel and on the Simi and Jimmy channel showcasing us interviewing random people, asking inappropriate questions on the street, and, and throwing spaghetti all over Walmart. Base. Which is why we're on the pathetic list. <laughs> so it's not, the, it's why, not the hypocrite list. It's the pathetic list. Which is why it rolls back to that's why we should have been number one on the pathetic well, list. I very well might end up being number one. Because some of the things that end up on this list, we've probably done before. <laughs> like, so far, 100%. I've done me, Biggs, and YouTube pranks. <laughs> Yeah. All three. Yep. Uh, 
but what makes them pathetic? Because I think it takes a lot of bravery and social skill to go out there with. I don't camera. think it does. I think it takes a lot, like a total lack of self awareness, and just to some level, like complete apathy for anyone else. Because some of these pranks are are just so dumb. Like, what's that guy's name? Uh, Mizzy or something in the UK. Like, one of his prank videos was walking up to people at night and saying, do you want to die? <laughs> like, what kind, of, uh, what kind of mental state do you have to be in to think, you know what, I should go do this. Like, this is a good video. But did he get a lot of views? Because uh, Florian Himsel told me that uh, getting views is the most important thing. So it can't well, be cringe or, or pathetic if he's getting a million views. I mean, sure, he got a lot of views, but then his channel got taken down, so it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> He's banned on like every social media. That should be on the list. People who get their YouTube channel taken down. That should be like number one on the pathetic <laughs> list. Especially if it happens multiple times. Oh man, yeah. Ba so imagine pathetic. since the age of 12, every YouTube channel you make eventually gets taken down. You'd have to be the king of the pathetic list. True. Uh, does anybody in the chat agree or disagree with Biggs? Let's see. Uh, Wafent says, we don't see as many violent pranks these days. I don't know, Biggs, have you seen a lot of violence out there? Um, I wouldn't say... I have seen some violent pranks. I, I don't know if it's, like, as popular as they used to, where they just, like, randomly go up and, you know, start fights and stuff. The but knockout I game? Seen, I have seen some where they just, like, walk up and just punch somebody in the face, and those are pretty, pretty uh, current. Now, when you say they... You don't mean YouTube pranksters are walking up and punching innocent people in the face. I do. <laughs> Next, you're going to say they're scholars and, you know, all, all yep. sorts of terms you could use. Okay, yep. so should we let the people vote then? Do they, and how do you want to word this? Just pranksters? Yeah, just like, I guess prankster influencers <laughs> are prankster influencers pathetic go vote in the poll people and we'll see if i can't figure out a proper way to get the yeah i'll just there we go just cover us all up that's fine <laughs> there we go uh, we'll see Uh, wow, something's actually more pathetic than me so far, because this is currently at 87% bigs. See, I'm on to something. I don't understand how so many people can be against this, though, because it's it might be bad for the one person who's getting pranked and punched in the face, but for the rest of us, it's endless entertainment. I mean, is it not so funny to watch an annoying, rich streamer be obnoxious in public? Is that not the most entertaining thing you can think of? The most entertaining part is watching them get arrested. <laughs> or killed? <laughs> that too. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've seen many of those. I've, I've seen a few. You've seen where, like, some? Where, You've seen some people just, get killed? I don't, know if, I don't know if they died, but they just got like shot up pretty bad. Deserved it. So we're sitting at 67 votes, which is roughly half, and it's at... 85%. Okay, so I think it's going to clock in at 85. We did get a donation from Fishy who said, Biggs, where do you stand on the wheelchairs in D&D discourse? Valid or should those cripples just drink a potion? Have you been hearing about this? Um, I feel like it's a, a really dumb like argument. Like, why do people care one way or another? If somebody wants to have one, why not? I mean, if... um. What do they call it? Warforged. If the Warforged exists, how does a wheelchair not exist? <laughs> you know what I mean? And for those that don't know, Warforged is like literally like AI robots, basically, in D&D. &D. So I feel like if those exist, a, a wheelchair can exist. Why not? Yeah, because... I don't really follow this stuff too much, but I, I did see somebody bring up a Bran from Game of Thrones. And I was like, yeah, like they gave him kind of a wheelchair, didn't they? Like that by the end. So it, it something like this can exist in a medieval setting, right? Yeah, and like like Mr. Wizard said, that is a true thing, and I feel like it's something that the player's going to have to face when they're playing. 
is yeah, like dungeons aren't going to be wheelchair accessible always. Like there's going to be stairs and stuff. You need a Hodor or if, a, a Biggs Bigsington to ride on the back wanna, of. Right. If they want to play with that kind of character, there's going to be like issues that they have to face just like in real life. If you're in a wheelchair in real life, you go somewhere without a ramp, you're going to have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And it's the same in the game. I mean, unless you're a mage and you can levitate, well, there you go. That's a workaround. But I feel like arguing over it is really stupid. Yeah, uh, it's whatever. You know, if if people want to be crippled in their fantasy game, fuck it. Uh, Jacob yeah. Wisebrod says, Monkey wears the Is It Kino Fifty Shades? Well, Jacob, you are, I can see you're a member of the channel, so you already have access to that. Uh, just, like, go to the members tab or something. You know, there's, like, four Is It Kinos up for you guys right now. Uh, and Len Rhea says, Game of Thrones ruined my childhood. Imagine being into Game of Thrones as a literal child. <laughs> that's That's a weird thing to be into when you're, like, eight. So where did it land? Eighty five percent. Oh yeah, yeah. I already I already showed the the pathetic list, but yeah, it's it's currently <laughs> prankster influencers at eighty five, monkey at seventy two, and bigs at twenty seven. And so how how are we gonna do ties? Are you gonna like do a tiebreaker? Oh, no, it's an point? ongoing list, bigs. Right, but yeah. like eventually there's gonna be ties. Are we just gonna do like a tiebreaker for? Oh, we can just things? decide which one belongs <laughs> above the other. But I mean, same score is the same score. Wow, nice. Thank you for joining the measly few. Hey, we're three members away from 50. So I, if I can get three more of you this stream, what a what a miracle that would be. Uh, okay, should I add something to the pathetic list, Biggs? Yeah. Now I've got a lot of them. Maybe we should just go through all of them today. But uh, th- there's a lot of discourse that has been relevant lately. Uh, let's just do the one I talked about a second ago. Uh, people who think saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic. Biggs, have you been seeing this shit? Oh my God. So I'm not, I'm not even a Christian, okay? I'm a hardcore fedora-tipping atheist. I, Christ is not my king. But when I see motherfuckers who claim to be Christians in the conservative spheres on Twitter... And they are so, oh, they got fucking Israel's dick so far up their ass that just one thought of saying something negative about Jewish people will will drive them up the wall. And they're not even Jewish. Like the people who run the Babylon Bee, the people who run the Daily Wire, these people claim to be Christians, but now they're claiming it is anti-Semitic to use the phrase, Christ is king. Biggs, you go to church. Okay. Can you explain like what Christ is King means to Christians? So I can I can tell you what it means to to Jews and why they don't like it. <laughs> uh, I, I want to hear pretty, both. I want to hear both pre- sides of the aisle on this one. Christ is King is saying what it means. Like that's literally what it means. The reason why the Jews don't like it is because they don't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They don't believe that you know he was God on Earth. They believe he was just like some dude running around like telling lies basically so when you say christ is king it's it's like saying you know it's on the same level of like saying he's god's son that sort of thing so then they get all bent out of shape and they're like i don't know it's just it's one of those things where they don't believe the same thing so they're going to get bent out of shape so and yeah, I think it is really dumb for Christians to yeah. be mad at that. That's like, okay, so you're going to defend them to the point of going against your own beliefs? Sure. Defending a group <laughs> of people who think you should not exist. Like, Jewish people have no love for the Christians. It's it's only a one-way street of Christians cucking for the Jews. The, the Jews will never, in any circumstance, cuck for the Christians and say, oh, yeah, no, I think people have the right to believe in Jesus. It's not going to happen. And for for these conservative Christian men to be now advocating against Christ as being their king, like, I don't believe in hell, but I think they should all go there. Yeah, it's it doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, well, I just had a thought on it. I was going to say, um, so the the reason why Christians are always up to bat for Jews is because it's it's a biblical thing. It says 
you know, those who like support Israel will be blessed. Those who don't basically are going <laughs> to see bad things happen. So it's like, I get to an extent supporting them, but it's like when you get to that point where you're going against your own beliefs and doing all these terrible things and saying stupid stuff. Mm, no, <laughs> that's okay. just, that is pathetic. I'm going to let everybody vote, but shout out to Mr. Wizard, to Rocka Jones and late six who all became members of the measly few. We are now at 50, excuse me. So fuck. Yeah, bros. We did it. Let me know what the new emoji should be. Cause I think I get a new emoji at 50. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I should have probably made more arguments about this, but it, it just seems pretty clear that these people are retarded and pathetic, so I'll let people vote. Uh, <laughs> how, how do I word this for the people? People know what we're talking about. Christ is king deniers. Yes or no? <laughs> Give me your vote. Let's get to 58. That's a weird thing for Evan Fitzpatrick to say since he's not a member. <laughs> <laughs> like what are you what are you talking about? Just do it then if you want to do it. Uh how is praising a Jew anti Semitic? Yeah, I mean I thought Jesus was the king of the Jews. What did they forget about that part? So well the whole thing with that is they never believed it themselves. Uh, they're they, kind of saying that ironically to him as they were stabbing him to death up on the crucifix. Yeah. Like, oh look at our king. We're Roman Jews, we're stabbing the shit out of him. Yeah, have Jews ever apologized for killing Jesus? That's my question. Well, no. In their mind, why would they? Because they, <laughs> they don't believe he is who he says he was. So, of course, they're never going to. They've got a lot of things they're never going to apologize for. Shout out to all those Palestinians. Uh, currently, with 51 votes, we have 83 points for these Christ is King deniers. Uh, but it's still going up and down a little bit. Yeah, I think around 57 is half, and we normally stop at half, so. Okay. So, okay, we got 57. It's at 77. Let's do it. Uh, Biggs, what do you want to put on next? And, uh, wow, these crisis <clears throat> King deniers are only three points more pathetic than me. That's pretty good. <laughs> hey, you're getting lower on the list. I mean, take that as a win. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, if we keep bringing in some big number items, you know, you won't even see me on the list anymore. Well, I feel like the next one's going to be pretty high up there. <laughs> well, we'll see. I might have some arguments to to go against you, and everybody will realize you're wrong. But, Biggs, what is the next item you'd like to put on the pathetic list? Or should we read it? Now, let's read this real quick. Uh, Shubba donated five pounds, I think. And he said, Biggs, what do you think of the red heifer sacrifice that Israel is going to do soon? People are saying it could happen on the 29th or the 8th. And that got four thumbs up from the chat. <laughs> What's red heifer? So, you know what this is? Not exactly. Like, I understand a little bit about it. Like, I have never researched into it specifically. But basically, in the Bible, there's a like some form of ritual that they're gonna do at a specific time, specific place, and it has to be red heifers, and they have to be like perfect they they can't have any blemishes on is a heifer a cow it's it, yeah okay yeah. and so the cows that they're flying in are actually from texas i'm pretty sure but, what uh, <laughs> the way they're, they're picking up cows in texas and flying them to israel for a sacrifice yeah and uh okay i don't know i feel like i'd have to do more research on it to to give like a specific answer but we do have a chai sighting in the back of biggs's camera Want to come say hi? Is her middle name T, so you can say Chai T? Well, it is T, but then people bullied me because they're like, "Oh, well, Chai does mean T." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, care. that." I mean, fuck those. I people. don't care. <laughs> if somebody gets mad at you for saying ATM machine, you have a right to punch them in the face. That, I'm going to put that on the list next. People who who say stupid shit like "Don't say Chai T," "Don't say ATM machine." How about you don't tell me what the fuck to say? Okay, Every, True. I can say uh, non bread and people know I'm not going to say non just because it translates into bread. It's a different fucking kind of bread. Chai tea is a different kind of fucking tea. Anyway, True. shout out to Chai. She's sniffing away. Should we do people who do not own a cat? Pathetic list. It'll get like three votes. 
Uh, so anyways, mine was, um, my entry is Singaporean cargo ship dry, or, <laughs> captains. Crew members. <laughs> or just the captain you're mad at. Uh, anyone that is in any way able to, to pilot the ship. <laughs> well, in case somebody did not check Twitter in the last two days, Biggs, do you want to let everyone know what you're talking about? Uh, basically... And I'm still even kind of foggy on the details because I've heard a lot of different things and some different news sites are saying different things. So I, I guess I don't even know the specifics myself. <laughs> but basically what happened was this cargo ship was leaving a uh, port in, um, in Baltimore. And for some reason, like all the lights went out, they lost power and it like, did a 45 degree turn and went <laughs> straight into one of the supports for a bridge and took the bridge out, killing like at least 20 people. Do you know the name and, of this bridge? It was the uh, composer of the star spangled banner Biggs. Yeah. I, I saw the name. I just, I don't remember. I believe it's Francis Scott key. Yeah. And <clears throat> like while there were still bodies in the water, and rescuers were trying to save people. While this was still happening, I saw articles, think piece articles pop up saying, when they rebuild the bridge, they should give it a, a different name because Francis Scott Key owned slaves. <laughs> like, wow, this is your priority as people are literally drowning in their cars. <laughs> the guy who wrote one of the worst songs that I hate Got a whole bridge named after him, and this is what you're thinking about. Yep. Yeah, any chance they get. <laughs> that, that, that person should be on the pathetic list. Somebody who thinks the bridge should be renamed. But, you know, that's a little too specific. Maybe I'll bring that in next week. But Biggs, why do you hate those poor Sri Lankan or whatever fucking Asian country crew workers on that ship? They're the real victims here. So I'll I'll present this as something that I am completely open to changing my mind on because like I said, I don't even know the actual true specifics because there's way too much different information out there. But from what I've gathered so far is that they were, you know, um, taking the ship out of the port and getting ready to go into this bridge and somehow they lost power. And while it was out of power, somehow they careened it into the bridge. <laughs> And I, when, I, it, when it loses power, I don't think you have any control over the direction it goes in. See, that's what some people said, but other people said on newer ships like that one, you can still control the ship 100% because there's They should have like, pulled out like paddles. There's like backup, <laughs> backup generators on smaller rudders or something like that okay. that can control the ship to an extent where it wouldn't have done what it did. So for me, it's like, if that's true, how did this happen? If you watch the video and like see the the track of where they were going, they had to have like last second just turn that sucker as hard to the right as they could <laughs> to turn that much to hit that support. It makes no sense in my brain. Like and then especially if you like watch the video sped up, you can see how like hard of a turn it was. It yeah, I did like, watch the eight times speed video and it, it looks like they were aiming for the. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like there's no, it wasn't like, oh, no, we're off by like one degree and now we're going to like barely skim it and take out the bridge. It was like a full like 45 degree change right directly into that post like there. <laughs> so what is your accusation here that they legitimately hit it on purpose? How else do you explain that? It doesn't make any sense. And then I'm what, also is this hearing... like their version of Night 11, but they <laughs> like a much smaller budget. They're just going to hit a bridge. So, so now we're going to get out into the weeds of some conspiracy stuff. Uh, yeah, let's right? get into the weed, Biggs. I, I like what you're th thinking over there. So there's two other things I heard. One thing is they're saying, oh, it was a cyber attack. They cyber attacked this ship and made it go into the bridge. And then it's like you get into the whole thing where huh, I remember this movie I watched where a cargo ship got cyber attacked. And Leave crashed. the world behind? Yeah. The Obama <laughs> produced movie? So it's like, that seems really interesting that they would say that that's the cause of it. 
Um, there are more a- connections than that to that movie. And if you don't know what we're talking about, there's a Netflix movie last year called Leave the World Behind, produced by Obama. And basically, when Obama was president, you know, he's always getting the, the deep dish scoop on all the ways that America can be destroyed. And he basically took that blueprint of like how a foreign country could fuck us completely. And he like made a movie like detailing how to do it, which is fucked. So, so here's the other thing with that that I thought was really interesting is like you have that connection to that movie, and then what happens in the movie? Spoiler alerts, I don't care, whatever. Um, is eventually it leads to Americans going into like a civil war with themselves, is basically what, what happens at the end. And what movie is coming out very soon? Oh, a movie Alex called Garland's Civil War, yeah. <laughs> where America goes to war with itself. Like, is that predicting what's going to happen in November of this year? So some people are saying they're giving us hints at what's next. And it's like, you know, it's conspiracy theories. So it's like, you got to take out the grain of salt, but it is like weird. But then the other thing was, um, what was the other thing I was thinking? That the, there was some sort of lion uh, symbol on the real world ship and then in the movie the ship was called like the red lion or something like, there's some yeah. sort of lion on both ships so no the other thing I was thinking of was like the the what do you call it the the company that owns that company the parent company they also owned the ship that turned sideways in the canal the evergreen oh, ship oh yeah so it's like this is the second one that's caused like a major well, that one wasn't near as bad as this one because I don't think that one ended up killing anyone, did it? It just shut down the ports for, like, really long. Some might say uh, shutting down the economy for any amount of time is more dangerous and violent than human death. Well, this one's shutting down all those ports, too, mm-hmm. until they clear a path. So this is like a double whammy. There's actual deaths at the time of the accident, plus everything that is going to come after from... Nobody being able to, like, import and export stuff. What do you think should be done with the crew members of this ship? And thank you to RKO Fan for becoming a member. So then there's there's the other issue of they went into the ship to get the black box, which most transport, you know, things have, to track, like, what's going on with the, the like, whatever it is, like the plane or ship or whatever. And for some reason, allegedly, and I I can't confirm this because I didn't research into it fully, but (laughs) allegedly there's like two minutes right before the crash where the black box is completely empty. There's no information on it. And that keeps recording during a power outage, I assume. It's supposed to save like the last 20 hours from whenever you like pull up the the information. So it's like... So they they intentionally stopped recording at some point? Like, they didn't want us to know what they were doing? So that's another thing I was going to ask, is, like, does anybody know how those work? Is there a way to, like, hands-on turn that thing off for a certain amount of time? Because if you can... I would hope not. To me, that's really suspicious, right? Like, that, again, would point towards the crew. Aren't some of the 9-11 black boxes from the planes, like, eternally missing, even though they're indestructible? Yeah. Yeah, somebody found those. So then, the, okay, so then there's another side of this where it would kind of take blame away from the crew members of the ship, um, which is there are there were people saying, well, it wasn't the crewmates of the ship piloting the ship at the time. It was the people, I can't remember what they call them, but there's like people that know the ports really well. And so they'll come and get on the ship and take it over until they're out of the port. That way it's like, they're like professionals of getting ships in and out, basically. So then they're saying, oh, it was actually those people that were in control of the ship. So it's like, that's why there's so much information out there. But to me, from what I was gathering, it almost seemed like a crew issue. But it couldn't, it could not be. I mean, I'm, I'm open to people's ideas on this. It well, I no think sense. once we let our audience vote on whether or not this crew should be on the pathetic list, that will be the objective truth of reality. And basically this vote right now will decide if they're innocent or guilty. So True. how should I word this? Uh, and some people see, thought that they were from India, but when I Googled it, it said that they were from Singapore. So I don't know 
what these people actually are. But yeah, I I originally heard Indian as well. Yeah, and so. a lot of the racist memes I saw that drew them as Indians with dots on their heads. But when I googled it, it said fucking they're from Singapore. So I don't know. Well, I thought the ship was based out of Singapore, but I thought the crew was Indian. That might, yeah, that might be it. I don't know. So I'll just put a, <laughs> a bridge, boat, <laughs> crash, crew members. Vote yes if it belongs on the list. No if it doesn't. Let's see and where it lands. To kind of add to the conspiracy side of it, the other weird thing is, what is it, like the, the solar eclipse coming up that they're putting out a lot of warnings for to, like, stock up on food and do all this. But who's like, putting that crap? out? Fucking so Tim I, Pool? I... <laughs> no, hold on, let me look. The people so who sell emergency person. survival kits are saying this, I assume? Oops. Fucking Alex Jones and Tim Pool just fucking lying to people to sell shit? So there's like... What was the one I saw? There's like travel warnings about like using... Like driving anywhere, they're saying stay inside. Like, I don't feel like I've seen these kinds of warnings before. But anyways, I saw people trying to tie this into the whole ship thing, and like, they're trying to piece it together with the the whole Obama movie thing. I wondered if anyone had heard any more of that because I only briefly saw some of that, and I was curious to know what was being said about that part. Well, after sixty five votes. The bridge boat crash crew members have 65 pathetic points. Uh, 65. Shorby says it was FEMA. Let me see. Let's see. So I I Indian <laughs> crew from crashed ship. Hopefully we remember what that means in five years when we return to this great list. Uh, and they are currently less pathetic uh, then me. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, click there, click there. Just try to show people my cool pathetic list. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, this is like a... Tips on how to plan ahead for the solar eclipse from FEMA. Wait, the solar eclipse? People think that's going to be bad? I thought you just had to like get so, some sunglasses so, to look at it. So that's what I'm saying is like before, at least I never heard of warnings like this coming out for a solar eclipse. It was like, don't look at the, the eclipse with your bare eyes, like use certain glasses. And that was pretty much it, right? Well, people pulled this out and said, well, FEMA released this and this is really suspicious with everything going on around the world. So it's like, uh, let's see. Potentially a limited gasoline availability. Have a family communication plan when attending large gatherings to ensure where to meet up. During the solar eclipse? Bring extra gas, food, and water. Drink plenty of water, which, whatever. Um, where's the other ones? There's one about, like, stocking up on food and stuff. I think unless we all get like a push notification to our phones with a, a loud siren to alert us of something. I don't know if there's anything we should actually be worried about. Right. It's just like, I don't know that this is, like I said, this is something that I saw briefly that people were trying to connect to this. Oh, okay. Thing. But then I was like, well, why are they just bringing this up now? Cause this is like, at least the document I had found was from 2017. So that's why I'm asking Chat, like, does anybody else know why they're trying to bring this up now? Uh, and why they're trying to tie it into this conspiracy? I'm just interested, I guess. Is this the conspiracy cast or what? Uh, it might be for the last 10 minutes. Who can say, Jay? Uh, shout out to Shubba, who gave us two pounds to say you want to do an Is It Kino on Obama's film. Uh, I don't think so. All right, I watched it. It was like a 2.5 out of out of five, you know, very mid movie. Didn't really go anywhere. I did not get all that spooked by it, but I thought Ethan Hawke, as usual, was pretty sexy. Uh, Biggs, if uh, this Indian crew got 65 pathetic points out of 100, does that make them guilty or innocent? 
we're going to resolve this conspiracy theory now. I mean, it's more than 50%, so I'd say that's uh, it's their fault. Yeah, that's how juries usually vote, right? Uh, if, if more than yep. 50%, <laughs> then he's guilty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> isn't that weird? Isn't isn't that how mm, democracy should work? Is you just got to get more than 50%? How come juries are so la di da hoity toity about it? Why do they want 100? True. Yeah. I think it's dumb. It's so stupid. Let's reform everything. Uh, Biggs, let's see. We've done how many so far today? Five? Five things? Uh, should I go again? Because I've, I've got plenty more. Sure. And Propane Salesman, thank you for the $2. He says, hello, big man and monkey boy. Which one is which, do you think? Which one of us I'm is probably, the big boy or the big man? Probably monkey boy because pretty hairy on the face, you know? Yeah. And I'm I'm pretty big. I'm getting pretty big, to be honest. I mean, something needs to be done. Uh, okay, did Crisis King one? Let's see, what else do I want to do? Uh, have you seen this discourse, Biggs? Here's my, here, 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 here's what should be 100% on the pathetic list. If somebody votes no, they're not paying attention. What do you think of this, Biggs? People who think they are so disabled, they need DoorDash in order to live. There, there's been uh, some um, hubbub from the disabled community saying, if I can't order DoorDash three times a day, I cannot eat. And people reply, uh, why can't you just be like any other human being and like buy food or like a frozen meal and microwave it? And these literal retards say, we are too retarded. It's too hard to read the instructions on the back of the frozen meal. Uh, some of our, our hands are all curled up and fucked and we can't peel the plastic or open the box. And and they think that DoorDash is legitimately a human right that their people could not live without, despite it only really getting big in the last five to ten years. Now, here's here's a question, and I'm kind of scared of the answer. Can you use food stamps on DoorDash? Almost certainly not. I don't know how get, they would integrate that. You can also get like uh, like groceries and snacks and that kind of stuff on there. Because I feel like if you can, that's D is it's kind of dumb. Is food stamps just like a prepaid debit card that they give you that you can spend on anything or what? I think so these days. Hmm. I'm not totally sure how it works. I think at some point it was like actual like slips they gave you, right? Or maybe no, maybe that was like WIC or whatever that's called. I don't remember. As poor as I might be, even if I qualify, I'm never going to find out, Biggs. I refuse. So hopefully I never know the secrets of food stamps. Uh, somebody, uh, part of this discourse also, and somebody pointed this out in the chat, uh, Papa Perez, yeah, these people are saying that they can't eat leftovers because of histamines or something like that. Like if, if they eat leftover food, suddenly the food is now poisonous to them and they will die. And they think like one out of every three people has this. It's like some made up thing that probably like one out of every billion people has actually experienced. I can't even play devil's advocate <laughs> on this because it's so dumb. People who refuse to cook claim it's impossible, refuse to eat frozen meals claim it's impossible. But opening up that McDonald's bag that they paid an extra 20 bucks to get delivered so, to their house is OK. So that leads me into a kind of a funny side story. So when I. At my last job I worked, I had this guy who had diabetes. And it's whatever, you know, if you got it, you got to do certain things, you know, that's completely fine. And we even told him that, like, when he told us the first time, like, yeah, certain times I have to eat something, otherwise bad stuff happens. And we're like, okay, you know, that's perfectly fine. Step away and eat whatever you need and, uh, yeah, take care of it. And so one time we're, like, driving back from Missouri – and out of nowhere, like the whole day has been fine. Everybody's been pretty nice to each other. Morale's pretty good. And he's been like quiet in the back as we're driving up. And out of the blue, he just screams like super pissed off. He's like, I need to eat right now. My diabetes can't be like put off or something like that. And we're just like, 
whoa, like, okay, man, like, we'll stop at, I don't know, Hy-Vee or something so you can grab something to eat. Like, uh, I don't know, whatever you need. And he's like, no, it's got to be McDonald's. Oh, I have my to have gosh. McDonald's. And me and the other guy kind of look at each other like, what? And he's like, I know what my diabetes needs, and it's McDonald's. I need, a, like, I think it was like a McChicken and something else. And I'm like, what? It's a medically prescribed McChicken, Biggs. What, you don't understand that? <laughs> and, like, I, for a second there, I almost, like, look back and start laughing. You know, he's <laughs> you messing with have. us. Because I thought he was messing with us at that point. I'm like, okay, you know, this is whatever. He's, you know, taking the piss. And so I turn back and look at him, and he is, like, stone, like, pissed face. And, like, he's completely red. And I'm like, dude, are you serious right now? He's like, if you don't pull over, I'm calling HR right now. Right now. (laughs) Pull over right now. You're going to get fired if you don't get me McDonald's right now. So we pulled off at the next McDonald's and he went inside and he like got his food and sat inside and ate instead of oh getting back gosh. in the truck. So he sat in the parking lot and like waited for like 20 minutes for him to eat. And, and you guys down. are all on the clock? Yeah. It was like, hmm. what just happened, man? Like we had completely like a fine day, no issues with anyone. And then out of nowhere. <laughs> this sounds like so, one of the people who would say DoorDash is a human right. Yeah, and, like, they have to have McDonald's, otherwise mm-hmm. <laughs> they're going to die. Uh, Wild. Patchy's wife says, food stamps is literally free money. My brother gets $300 a month for groceries, and he buys Mountain Dew and mac and cheese. That's fine, as long as, like, they can't buy fucking booze and cigarettes, but I don't know if they can. I would hope not. Are we just, like, giving my tax money to enable somebody's addiction? Probably. I think we literally are in a lot of cases, so fuck it. Why am I even complaining? But Yeah, that's why I'm an advocate for uh, drug testing for any kind of assistance like that. Uh, Jay Green wants to know how much your co-worker weighs. He was bigger than me, my friend. Whoa! (laughs) That's not the diabetes talking when he says, I need to get McDonald's right now. That's that's a different addiction. That's, That's fucking food addiction. And and on top of it, thinking of that scenario, how old do you think this person is? Probably forty five. Okay, so you're you're kind of in the area. He was like fifty something. Yeah, but for me, that's that the type kind of person, of... like extremely obese, middle aged person. And for by middle aged for them, I mean like on death's door because you're not making it to eighty at that weight. But it, people who like. They're, they feel so entitled, and I guess their whole life they've never been told no when a 50-year-old man can start screeching from the back seat that he needs McDonald's now. Like, nobody beat this guy's ass in his whole life. Yeah, and funny enough, that's kind of why he got fired. Oh, good. So uh, at some point, one of my other coworkers had to go on a pretty long trip with him. It was like an hour and a half or something. And they were on their way back... And, you know, the day had gone fine. Again, my coworker said, you know, there was no issues. We had nice talks all day. And on the way back, my coworker was driving and he was like playing music. And the guy like, he said he like couldn't breathe right. And he like woke himself up because he was like choking or something. Uh, I have seen Randy the Wild Horse do that on live stream many times, many and then, times. <laughs> And then immediately started screaming at the top of his lungs at my coworker to turn (laughs) off his music or he's going to beat him up and this and that. And mind you, my coworker is, he's probably like six, seven ish. And like, what bill he was tall, huge six, seven. What the fuck? He's tall. Is he a fucking draft? But, uh, anyways, so the guy's like sitting there saying like, I'm going to beat you up this and that. And my coworker just started laughing at him. And so luckily this is all I like, caught on the camera inside the truck. And yeah, they turned it in, got him fired. Good. <laughs> but, uh, my coworker was like, Oh man, I should have pulled over and like beat him up and left him on the side of the road. <laughs> oh, so that guy. hopefully he's working at a McDonald's now. So he's always close to the thing that he needs to live. Yeah, really. 
don't like uh, people with certain conditions carry like an EpiPen around for emergencies? Like this dude should have at least five McChickens in his backpack at all times. If 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 it's that big of an emergency that at any second of the day you have to start screaming for it, you should probably just have it on you. Yeah, and that so that's another thing that we told him before this happened. He's like, "Well, do we take like lunch breaks?" And me and my coworker just kind of laughed at each other because we're like, "We don't take breaks through the day. We just work until we're done and go home." And he got pissed about that. He didn't blow up as much. Well, that is like, a good oh, reason I... to get pissed. If if I got a new job and they said, yeah, we don't take breaks here. Just keep working. Well, he was asking us. We weren't mm-hmm. saying he couldn't take a break. Really. Oh, okay. We don't take breaks. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. But what we told him was, we normally work out in the middle of nowhere. So you're going to have to bring a lunch. And he got pissed <laughs> that we said he had to bring a lunch. He's like, no, we got to go somewhere and get food. Almost like the people you're talking about. It's 100%. Like, the idea of food preparation is so alien to them that they think unless I get this food from a fast food restaurant, I can't eat it. Yeah. And that, that was, that's what he argued. He's like, no, I, I can't bring a lunch. I have to go get it. Like, why? If this is like your, your health thing or whatever or something that you care about, this is on you. 100%. Yeah. Like fucking pick it up on your way to work. Yeah, no kidding. Why do we have to t- take you through the drive through Or tell us to stop on the way to where we're going to grab fast food that you can eat later. Like, This isn't our problem. We're not going to pick up all of our tools and leave because you have to eat right now. Okay, I'm going to start the poll. How should I title this for the, the list? I'm thinking uh, Disabled Door Dash Demanders. How's that? Sure. <laughs> Vote yes or no on the poll. Does it belong on... The pathetic list. And this will probably be the last one for this week. But I could see us bringing this back every month. You know, every just throughout the day when uh, I see things that piss me off or I think are pathetic, I'll just put it down in my little notes app here and, you know, I'll always be prepared. Uh, while we're waiting for the votes, we should mention that next week we're bringing back JoJo190, even though I think eventually they will have more episodes for us to review and it won't be 190. Well, it's not 190 anymore, right? Because what? New episodes came out? Well, no, because we're breaking up into five episodes. Well, 190 just refers to the total number of episodes that we will be reviewing. But next Fair week, enough. we will be reviewing the first five episodes of JoJo Part 2. Is that right, Biggs? Yep. I will finally figure out if uh, uh, Joseph Joestar's son will also be named Joe. And will will vampire it was, Dio uh, Jonathan. come back? John will Jonathan's son also be named Joe? Will Dio come back? Can't wait to find out. I'm dying to know. Yeah, part two is called Battle Tendencies, and it takes place in New York City, right? Yes. Okay, should be based. Uh, disabled DoorDash Demanders currently has 84 pathetic points. Who which... are these people voting? No. <laughs> <laughs> people who uh, listened to when I said anybody listening cannot vote no. But uh, this this is very close to prankster influencers. Let's see. Disabled door dash demanders is at 84. Okay, so let's take a look at our final list for the week. We've got prankster influencers, number one. Disabled door dash demanders. Christ is king deniers. Mumkey. Indian crew from Crash Ship and Biggs. I was really hoping that the the ship crew would be more pathetic than me, but I guess at least they have real jobs. Probably less cats as well. It's probably more of a dietary thing in their culture than like a pet thing. <laughs> uh, Biggs, do you have any, you know... Other things you want to talk about before we end this episode? I I do have one thing I need to call you out on. Oh boy, calling me out on something? I mean, you did say you would be there for the funeral of Rusty Cage, and then w- when we started, you were nowhere to be seen. Both you and Reactor were no call, no shows. Yeah, that that was definitely my bad. I got the time zone mixed up. <laughs> what? <laughs> we live in the same time zone, bitch. Yeah, I know. Cause I, what was it? Let me go back and look. Yeah, so you said 9 EST, and I was thinking, I didn't think EST, I just thought 9 uh, I shouldn't time. have said that to you. I should have just fucking did the calculation. What was I thinking? I'm such a so, fool. 
I probably copied and, you, and pasted you told the same me, thing. When you told me nine, I was like, okay, we're same time zone, so nine o'clock, and then. And then at home. eight o'clock, the stream pops <laughs> up, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck it, I guess I missed it. Oh well, Rusty will die again. I'll just go to the next one. <laughs> no, I was out, and then when I got home uh, and I got on. I was like, oh. You missed a call like an hour ago or something like, oh, oh oops. Well, Reactor, uh, I still have not heard an excuse from him. I think he just doesn't care about Rusty. Yeah, he's Which kind of... Uh... I, I was hyped as fuck to get Biggs and Reactor on a podcast again since I think the last time you guys were on a show together was literally like eight years ago. So We'll have to uh, plan something with him. So uh, the other thing I was going to say is I'm posting my um, invite to the Big Squad. We will be playing Tabletop Simulator tonight. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know how many slots it can hold up to, but we can cycle through people. We're going to be playing like different board games and stuff. But we are also going to try and do more Jackbox nights. So we did one a few nights ago, and we also did a movie night. That one was kind of impromptu um, earlier. What movie week, did you guys so. watch? We watched Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed. It recently turned twenty years old. So was it on this show that I was trying to remember what movie had many people in a toilet getting shit on by a fat guy? Yeah. Did we did ever talk about? Oh yeah. So we must not have talked about it. My brother did find out that it was the I believe nineteen ninety nine Disney film My Favorite Martian, starring Christopher Lloyd who was Doc Brown from Back to the Future as the, the Martian with the shrinking technology. But I, I did get a lot of the details wrong. It was not a little kid. It was two fully grown men, not in a spaceship, but in like a little car. But they, they do drive through the sewer and end up in a, a fat guy's toilet. And then when he's about to shit on them, they make the car really big. But uh, last night I did watch that movie just because I, was it? I, I loaded up Disney Plus and it popped up as a recommended movie for me. And I was, no like, way. I was like, holy shit. Because <laughs> my brother found out the name of it and then I just, you know, didn't think about it. But if Disney Plus wants me to watch it, I don't have a choice. Uh, and the, the movie, I gave it two out of five on Letterboxd. You know, not a great film, but it, it's the only time I've seen that, that Dr. Emmett Brown energy from Christopher Lloyd outside of Back to the Future. There's a lot of, just uh, he's he's the conductor of the orchestra of the universe, and he's spouting off all this sci-fi gobbledygook with a, such confidence. Now I I love that actor and that kind of role. Like you look at a movie like Nobody, where he plays eighty-five-year-old man in a retirement home, and I just, I wanted to kill myself. Like what a fucking waste of this great man, just fucking sitting there doing nothing. Uh, so yeah, we finally solved that mystery. I watched the movie and it was mid. Sad. Yeah. I, I, I need to watch, like... uh, who framed Roger rabbit. Uh, that's one of my blind spots. Like, oh, I haven't, I haven't seen that in a long time. I don't think I've seen it early or what am I even saying? I've, I haven't seen it in so long that I can't really remember specifics of it. I just remember like random scenes. Well, that'll be our next double date night, Biggs. Next time you come over with your lovely new lady friend, we can all watch Ro Roger Rabbit get framed. True. We were pretty bummed that you, you canceled on us. We're yeah, we were going to go to... Monkey Man. What? We were looking forward to seeing uh, the Monkey Man. Oh, I thought you... I thought you were implying we made plans to go see the film A Monkey Man that is coming out next oh, week. And no. I was like, Biggs, that's not even fucking out. We met you. <laughs> yeah, we were going to go to the, the Ankeny Diner that has been featured in multiple episodes now of What Would You Do? But I was a sweepy little boy that day. So we'll have to oh, go. Oh, no, ahead. not again. I'm, I'm a sweepy Just little boy most days, sweepy, Biggs. It's a miracle I ever boy. clicked the go live button because it's like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm too exhausted to give these people a real show. You know, you know, to be honest, I feel like the last week or so, I have been so tired. I don't understand it. Like, there's days where I slept pretty much the entire time I was off work. Because I get off at like 7 a.m. and I start work at 10 p.m. I slept from 7 a.m. almost all the way to 10 p.m. because I was just Oh, my so God. I don't understand how. What is that, like why 15 am, hours, Biggs? Why am I so tired? I don't understand. I'll like I set think... an alarm to get up and do something. And I'll wake up for like maybe 30 minutes, an hour, and then just go lay back down, pass out again. I do legitimately think 
I have more energy when I get less sleep than when I get more sleep. Like five or six hours of sleep, I'll wake up and eh, it'll suck, but whatever. But if I sleep for like 10, I'm going to be groggy all fucking day. It's so counterintuitive. Yeah. You might as well just get less sleep. Yeah. And Patchy points out, I think two episodes in a row now, that it's not the Ankeny Diner, it's the Drake Diner. <laughs> keep getting that <laughs> name wrong. It's not even in Ankeny, so I don't know why I keep saying that. Uh, I think there is an Ankeny Diner. it's going to be on purpose, right? <laughs> Most things I do are not on purpose, Biggs. That requires uh, self-awareness. Fair enough. Uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in to this 14th episode of Monkey and Biggs 365. Thank you to the six or seven odd number of people who became members of the measly few uh if you become a member there's four new episodes visit kino waiting for you every time i upload something new you guys get it immediately as members so go check that out uh biggs you want to plug anything this week uh nothing in particular i just uh posted the big squad link if you guys want to hop in uh there is something in the i think it's the rules chat where you can click to get like the tags for game nights and movie nights stuff like that um we're gonna try and do them more often in the last few times we planned stuff didn't really work out time wise for people so i'll try and find better time slots for people because i know like a monday night is not ideal <laughs> for something especially when it's at like eight or nine o'clock so uh meanwhile in my world one reason why i'm exhausted today is because i've I've been editing this fucking Medea video all day, and I, I hate editing videos, and it puts me to sleep. But it's so close to being done that uh, I can taste it. And it's the longest individual Medea review yet. I think I spend almost half an hour just on this one movie, and usually that's closer to like 15 to 20. So got a lot to say about Medea's big happy family, and I'm sure approximately 6,500 people are excited to click on that video and watch it. So. Shout out to them. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read the chat real quick. Uh, uh, Patchy's wife did want you to know that it was her that found it, apparently. The, oh, that found the movie with the, the scene with the guys in the toilet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Patchy likes to t take credit for what other people do. Uh, I need to drink coffee before and during the streams. Yeah, I, I make a coffee every single time I go live just because I know I need it. Lately, I've been drinking these, uh, where's the front? These Alani's. Pretty good. I've never seen that. Your, is your wife still drinking the, the fucked up lemonade? Whatever that's called. No, uh, we actually found out that you can buy these like in uh, a case at Costco. And recently, they were on sale, so we bought like two cases. So we've been drinking those. So a better deal than getting charged lemonade at Panera. Yeah. Okay. Alani sponsor. That's right. Yeah, uh, sponsor us. <laughs> we'll be back next week with some JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and maybe some other stuff, hopefully. Bye, folks. See ya.